And we're very, very angry at those people out there who try to fool people into thinking that they really have the powers. They don't. I can't prove that they don't, but then the onus of proof is on them. I don't say they're not magical. They say they are. Prove it. Psychic fraud news. Because psychics are very often frauds. What do you think? Oh, I don't have to think. I know. What do you know? I have knowledge of Guru Maharajan. I have Guru Maharajan's knowledge. I don't have to think. I know. I have Guru Maharajan's knowledge. I'm speaking to my dad all day. Ask him to come through. Now I'm a skeptic. I'm hoping to get a message from my nan and granddad. I understand that. The spiritualist side of things. When I walk out on stage, I'm Sally. Nick, it's why you fail. Words will always retain their power. Words are for the means to meaning and for those who will listen, the enunciation of truth. A psychic and ghost hunter who was caught out because his mate, his friend, was up in the attic making bumps and bangs for him. He claimed it was paranormal phenomena in previous sessions and then was caught out and now says he won't do the psychic work anymore. He won't do the ghost hunting anymore. He's going to stop that because he's been caught out, I suppose. However, he is going to continue with mediumship. So basically he's saying he's going to stop the ghost hunting because he's got a bad reputation. Because he wouldn't actually get many people going to his ghost walks anymore because he's been so heavily exposed. But he is going to continue mediumship. So instead of doing ghost walks every week, or how often he does it, he's going to be doing psychic events where he claims to talk to the dead. And then in years to come, I have no doubt that he will go back to ghost hunting and people would have largely have forgotten his recent acts of fraud. As with practically all psychic frauds when caught out, this particular former ghost hunter and I would say fairly obvious fraud is basically claiming there's no proof. Oh, you can't prove it, it's just skeptics, you're cynical. Very rarely I think is there any real belief in it, other than the fact that if you are spending your life lying to people, how do you deal with that other than rationalise it in your own head after a while and decide, well, I do kind of believe in it, and I do believe that intuition, it may not be psychic, but I do believe that I'm intuitive, and that maybe that does give me an insight, and it comforts people. And you start to rationalise it, and maybe create a sort of a loose belief around it that follows after the fact. But I, I think very few people get into it at that level from any kind of sincere yeah. beginnings. There is a great little article on randy.org, which is the James Randy Educational Foundation's website. The article talks about the Long Island medium, the Long Island medium, as many of you would know, is a medium at Long Island and she's on TV and she's known as Long Island medium and she claims to contact the dead. She's got a program a little bit like um, Sally Morgan's program where there's a few bits where she does readings, heavily edited, lots of prior knowledge and uh, cold reading. So you'll find it to be as transparent as practically any TV psychic. But of course people believe in it. And the believers, get, they go, oh, it must be real. And therefore they pay huge amounts of money for a one-to-one -one reading or simply pay a large amount of money for a show to go and watch this particular person demonstrate their gift. Yeah. If only it could be just like a telephone line. Let me just see if I can get a little bit more information from her first. If you've convinced a person that that's their grandmother to the point that they're actually crying, 
I mean, surely those tears enough are, are perhaps proof that they've had, they've had proof that that really is their grandmother that's making well, the I think communication. It could, could, could indicate just a desperate wishful thinking, perhaps.